not so much most terrifying when you hear it, but um, pretty terrifying when you consider the implications. And that is uh, Steve Bannon talking, Steve Bannon, who's now uh, one of the principals on the National Security Council, arguably the most um, senior and listened to aide that Donald Trump has. Um, and I don't know. Um, who knows about his alcohol intake? I mean, people can get that. Um, that alcohol goes in my tummy. And here he is sitting on a couch. Um, but here he is um, on Breitbart Radio, which I presume is a YouTube show or, um, or a podcast, talking to Steve Edwards of the Heritage Foundation all the way less than 11 months ago. Will this be like Thucydides and the Peloponnesian War and that Athens and Sparta in, in the, the conflict was so pyrrhic that at the end, what the victor actually ended up losing to the Persians later. Did the victor here, the United States, have so spent force that in a rising power like China, that is, is, it, is the tragedy here that we haven't capitalized on the great victory that, that many generations gave us in the Cold War and that we're like, it's like Athens and Sparta, that you fight so intensely that you're, you're spent at the end of it? Well, no, I think because there was, for, for the people, for example, behind the Iron Curtain, it was, it was definitely a victory because they finally had freedom. Uh, the Soviet Union became an, an emasculated Russia and is no longer, not, not quite the threat that it was at that time. It's true that there are some problems which have, have arisen, like China, but again, with the right leadership, if we understand what we're dealing with there, not just think in economic terms, but in political terms, you know, there are now some 89 million members of the Chinese Communist Party, and they are still uh, wed to the old axiom of Mao Zedong that political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. And once you understand that, you understand why they're trying to build these islands in the South China Sea, why they're rattling their arms and aiming at uh, Taiwan. Are we, so are we go we're going to war in the South China Sea. I was a sailor there, a naval officer. We're going to war in the South China Sea in five to ten years, aren't we? There's no doubt about it. They're, 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 built, they're taking those sandbars and making basically stationary aircraft carriers and putting missiles in those. They come here to the United States and in front of our face, and you understand how much important face is, say it's an ancient territorial sea. That's a throw down, is it not, sir? Absolutely. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I have to give a little tip of the hat to this administration, which has did send a carrier over to the, to the South China Sea. That's, that's a step in the right direction. Uh, so there it is, Steve Bannon. When they come here and they look in our face and they say that's an ancient uh, ocean hallow ground, we're gonna we're going to war with them. Yeah, you know, pride faith is. Yeah, are you about Sparta? <laughs> I mean, I mean, literally. I wonder how what what was going through the mind of Steve Edwards of the Heritage Foundation when he was like, "Oh my God, who, I'm I'm I who's think this going lunatic <laughs> whose podcast I'm on?" I think he was glad I'll never have to deal with this guy again. <laughs> or. This guy is a slightly more lunatic version of what I'm basically saying. Right. I am a foreign policy uber lunatic at the Heritage Foundation. As a matter of fact, what's that guy's name again? Steve Edwards. That was Lee yeah. Edwards. Lee, oh, Lee, Lee Edwards. Edwards. Uh, and now, of course, Donald Trump has also talked about these uh, islands since then. During the campaign, he spoke about these. And uh, so it's not like he hasn't had this conversation with Steve Bannon. They make islands? It's like James Bond. I mean, this is like Dr. Evil, if you go Steve. Back to what, I mean, it's serious. Well, wait a second. But if you go back to what Dan Dicker was talking about, too. I mean, you know, look. You know, here's the dilemma, right? Is that um, you add these things up and it just sounds so um, absurd. You're like, I don't want to be, uh, you know, an alarmist. But then you also say, like, you know... Um, you can't build a fire escape when the house is on fire. So um, I don't know if we should pull the alarm right now, but we certainly should be making sure that we have a clear path to the alarm. I don't know what this means in real life other than, like, um, set up a special area of, of our podcast studio. 
for breaking news about China, but I don't know. People should be aware of this. 